Greetings and welcome to another program of the Deadly Experiment, all of you out there in television land and in YouTube land. Yes, we are substituting, copying, we are producing and reproducing these programs for those of you online or those who know some online who do not get public access television here in Rhode Island. So the Deadly Experiment slash Rick Adams Uncensored or the other way around, Rick Adams Uncensored, the Deadly Experiment is being posted from week to week, month to month on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, so you may avail yourselves of that opportunity. Well, this is a program that I have been meaning to put together for a long time. And it is, of course, taken from the Holy Scriptures, God's Word, who wrote the Word of God. The Word of God is made flesh in Jesus Christ. And the Word is God. His Word is perfect. Despite what many would tell you, the higher critics as they like to be known, we are readers of the Word of God, which is Him. It is His Word. Don't tell me God can't preserve every word that came out of His mouth to the ears of the prophets, to the ears of the disciples, to the ears of those who wrote the scribes, those who scripted and wrote what they were told to write by the Holy Spirit. Because He can, He does, He did, and He has, to put it simply. So we believe that word, and we believe the word of God, as it is written, tells us exactly what is going to befall us, America, Israel, in the last days, and what will befall this world. It doesn't look very nice, does it? Well, we've been telling you about it now for 12 years or more on this program. And when we started to tell you about economic collapse, about political turmoil, about electioneering, about election fraud, about educational fraud, the academic world, and most of all, the religious world, we were talking about the four hidden dynasties that are in the Word of God, hidden in Zechariah and in Zephaniah. Those are two prophets who gave us these prognostications forecast of what would befall his people, true Israel, and the fake, and the whole world in between in these last days. Friends, nobody would doubt, nobody would doubt any longer that we are now virtually on the verge of a total economic collapse. I say we, not just America, not just little Gina Raimondo's Rogue Island, but no, we are part of a global world system. Did you hear me? You know that. I don't have to explain it to you. We're all in this global system so that anything that happens in New York or in Rome or in China, Pakistan, Australia, whatever, wherever, South America, to collapse the system cybernetically in terms of banking, financial, capital, the dollars, the currencies, it will have a ripple effect across the whole globe. It is no longer nation sovereignty. Nation sovereignty. That's why your jobs have disappeared. Your manufacturing base is virtually all but gone in America. Your economic security and most of all, the, th the things that you thought would bring held for you in security. What are they? Well, the pensions. That's right. Your pensions are now in the most jeopardized state they ever were. People are not talking about it. We talk about it on this program. They're in jeopardy because of the derivative markets, the hedge fund markets, all of these key indicators worldwide that are now signaling a dire financial situation. The collapse is coming. Will it be in this year, the so-called election year, that we think we're supposed to happen? Or will there not be an election? Will Al-Qaeda or ISIS or Al-Shabaab or any of these other groups, Khorasan and, uh, uh, you know, Boko Haram, whatever, whoever's made up, will they strike at the financial institutions? And will there be an economic 
upheaval? Will there be a natural disaster such as an earthquake or Mount St. Helens erupting again in Washington State as it did on May 18th of 1980? Or will it be Mount St. Rainier, which is far more dangerous in terms of loss of life? Will any of these things happen to usher in a domestic collapse, a police state, and all-out government control over everything you do, from banking, to commerce, to trade, to utilities, to living, to survivability? These are forecasts in the Word of God. The prophets told us, Daniel in particular, that when we see these things come to pass, Daniel 10, Daniel 11, we will see a one world system coming together with a uniformity of monetary goals, monetary currency, and it will not be paper. It will not be a coin. It will not have any individual issuance. It will be a universal monetary system, a one world monetary system, not in currency, but in digital form. And this will require people to accept some sort of number to control them. Now, I'm not saying that's the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is, as it was recorded from the book of Genesis on to the book of Revelation, a mark that is in the thinking, the brain, and not necessarily a microchip, but a willingness to do the work of this end times monetary, political, religious beast system that is now at our doorstep. The hand, meaning doing the functioning of the system. So it's what you think and what you do to support the beast. And where is the beast system located from? Jerusalem, the city of end time prophecy. How long have we been telling you this? How much worse is it today than it was 10, 11, 12 years ago? I dare say a lot worse. Now, Brother Nathaniel, who was a convert from Judaism, which is the religion of the sons of Cain, the Kenites, the children of the wicked one, will tell you what exactly we face today economically, in terms of entertainment, Hollywood, academics, financial, governmental, and the religious solution in the end. I want to defer to Brother Nathaniel Kapner right now and listen very carefully to what he has to say about these key players of the end times. A far greater tyranny than anything our founding fathers ever faced is now the plight of America. I'm talking about the suffocating grip Jewry has on every component of American life. At the top of the food chain is the privately held Federal Reserve Bank, where Banyan Shalom Bernanke serves the Fed's principal shareholders, the Rothschild Group, Goldman Sachs, and J.P. Morgan Chase, who gouge Americans with interest charge on loans made to the U.S. government from monies printed out of thin air. The greatest scam in the history of Jewish swindling. Moving down the food chain is Jewish finance capital, where we find the usual suspects once again. Goldman Sachs, led by Lloyd Blankfein and Gary Cohn, and Citigroup, where veteran bankers Sanford Vale and Robert Rubin recently placed their Jewish alumnus Jacob Liu as head of U.S. Treasury, keep sending American jobs abroad, creating longer unemployment lines at home. Jewry's stranglehold on American life doesn't stop here but has its hands tightly wrapped around our political apparatus as well. With billions of dollars at their command, Jewish lobbies such as APAC, the ADL, the American Jewish Committee, and the ACLU fuel the engine of America's demise, the Israelization of foreign policy, abortion, mass immigration, and the homosexualization of domestic culture. Linked with political control is the emergence of our national security state, where homeland security is fully in the hands of Jewry. Big Sis is no more than Gentile window dressing. The real boys and girls behind our national police state are Michael Chertoff, Joseph Lieberman, Jews don't retire, Diane Feinstein, head of the Senate Intelligence, Carl Levin, head of the Senate Armed Services, 
and Bibi Netanyahu, who oversees the myriad of Israeli high-tech companies that operate throughout the architecture of both the DHS and the NSA. In entertainment, Jewry dominates showbiz, where Jews like Larry David, who urinates on a picture of Jesus Christ, and Sarah Silverman, who vows to crucify Christ again, are given a free pass. You know, everybody blames the Jews for, for killing Christ, and then the Jews try to pass it off on the Romans. You know, I'm one of the few people that believes it was the blacks. <laughs> I don't care. Good. I, I hope the Jews did kill Christ. I'd do it again. I'd fucking do it again in a second. In education, the American Federation of Teachers is led by Randy Weingarten, a professed lesbian who, while advancing the Jewish program of homosexuality, spelling the destruction of the Christian family, is intensifying federal centralization, short-circuiting local and state obstacles to Jewry's command over the minds of the masses. Enabling Jewry's sodomization of American life is the Supreme Court, where four Jews out of nine justices, 44% representation of only 1.8% of the U.S. population, Ginsburg, Kagan, Breyer, Sotomayor. Her mother is of Jewish extraction. One look at her brother tells it all. Voted down the Defense of Marriage Act, preparing our hapless country for a repeat of Solomon Gomorrah's unhappy ending. Finally, the propaganda levers that move the machinery of tyrannical hegemony is fully in the hands of Jews. CBS is owned by Murray Rothstein who passes himself off as Sumner Redstone. NBC is owned by Brian Roberts. ABC is owned by Sidney Bass, whose CEO is Robert Iger. And CNN is primarily owned by Israeli multimillionaire Aviv Novo. America has become an indentured slave to the Jews who rule America. Only the historic church, independent of Jewish control, who can muster up the guts to stand up for the few who expose the Jewish evil, can deliver America from the most pernicious tyranny the world has ever seen. So you see, the apostles themselves walked with Christ, and yet they did not know everything. But one thing they did know is in these last days, the sons of Cain, the Kenites, who called themselves Jews or Judah, and would like to make the world believe they are Judahites or Israelites, but are not, and do lie, and are of the synagogue of Satan, that they would orchestrate the economic collapse of the end times worldwide, just as they did in the 1920s and 30s, following World War I, which they engineered, the banksters got us into, much to our demise, but first they passed the income tax in 1913 and the Federal Reserve, you see, as Brother Nathaniel said. Those were instrumental in creating this one world system by destroying the sovereignty of the United States at its core. They also changed the Constitution in enough states to make it um, that the Senate would be made up of elected senators rather than appointed by the state legislatures. People like Nelson Aldrich, the maternal grandfather of Nelson Rockefeller from Newport, Rhode Island, were instrumental in doing a lot of this, particularly the income tax. Isn't that interesting? The very super rich pushing for an income tax as if they would pay it. You pay it, not them. They have their trusts and their tax-exempt foundations and so forth. You see how this synagogue of Satan works, my friend, huh? You're beginning to understand now, all the little children out there. We have so many people coming forward. We're going to have a special program up very shortly. God is blessing us. And I'll tell you more about that in subsequent programs. But young people are now coming to us as never before. Because it does tell us in the scriptures that in those last days, that he will pour out his spirit on all flesh and... His children, the Adamic, Caucasian, Jacobite, Israelite, people of the Bible from Genesis 25, 6, and 7, they would become curious in the end times. 
despite their disobedience and their heaping to themselves teachers having itching ears in the pulpit and not being fed, they would come to us. They would look for answers. They're not getting it from anybody else. Nobody can talk about this. None of the bobbing, weaving head talk shows or any of those imbeciles who haven't got the knowledge of the truth to begin with. Friends, it's all in this book. It's in the Word of God. If only some of you out there would do what others are doing. Seek and ye shall find. It's that simple. So we have economic collapse, an impending threat, worldwide as it was in the 1930s. And you know what happened in the 1930s. People were penniless overnight. Their bank accounts were missing, gone, stolen by the government, by the Roosevelt administration, which also led us into war worldwide, which followed depression. Horrendous debacle of war and the dropping of bombs, the new created by the Kenites at the Manhattan Project, the newly created A-bomb on school children, men and women in Nagasaki and, of course, in Hiroshima. Worldwide devastation, worldwide crimes leading to another new world order. And that's where we are today, on the doorstep of the Third World War in the Middle East, in Syria, with NATO, Russia, the United States, and China, among others. Friends, it's going to happen. How do I know it's going to happen? Because the Word of God says it. Ezekiel chapter 38, 39, and the kings of the north shall make war on Israel. Now, true Israel, not that bandit regime in the Middle East, but Israel meaning America today, the land of milk and honey today, the land surrounded by two gigantic oceans, the unwalled city of the scriptures where the Israelite people migrated to. And it's coming. The Russian bear is going to come to America. And it's going to get pretty ugly. We're at that doorstep now, but the four winds must blow. Economic collapse, political turmoil and collapse, educational, that's the academic world, <clears throat> and most of all, what follows all of this? A new faith. You hear about the faith community. It's going to be the one world religious beast. You see? And what does that mean? It means Satan is going to rule when he comes as the healer as the rescuer. You see, it's not just war and depression, all of these things. These are going to happen very shortly. <clears throat> but it's what comes out of them that matters. And what is war? What is the alternative? The alternative or antithesis to war, you guessed it, is peace. What does Paul say in 2 Thessalonians? Peace, peace, when there is no peace. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them like travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. That's Antichrist instead of Christ. Satan himself, back in Jerusalem, in his temple, healing the world. Friends, that'll be the most difficult time for us to tell you you're being deceived, because you're going to say, Rick, he's here. Jesus has returned, if you don't know any better. The fake Jesus comes first to bring what? Peace and safety to the world. Not war, but peace. A false peace, a false security. For those who take the mark of the beast. Now, for all of those who don't and who know better, some of us were called in that first earth age that was before this age. We've talked about it many times. We only have a half hour, so we can't get into detail. But trust me, in the book of Genesis, it opens up and tells us between Genesis 1, 1, and 2 that God destroyed that first earth age. Darkness fell upon the earth, and the earth became what? Void. Not was void. Became void. Mistranslation again. Makes all the difference in the world. He destroyed it. Because man and the spirits of Satan, the angelic beings, the Nephilim, were ruling, were rebelling, and were out of control. And they were taking a third of the souls of people then. That's right, we existed before. I know it sounds bizarre to those who don't understand. 
But in reality, we did. That's why God could say in the book of Genesis to Rebecca, when she had a little bit of a pregnancy issue, two little twins, two babies, one named Esau and the other named Jacob. God could say, Esau have I hated and Jacob have I loved. It doesn't make any sense, does it? Unless you understand something. He hated Esau because Esau and Jacob and all of us did exist in this earth, not the world, but the earth in the first earth world system. When dinosaurs roamed the earth, the Leviathan refers to them in the Bible. These are the great beasts of the field. These are those referred to in the word of God when we were all in spiritual form. And yet, one third of the souls in the first earth age, instead of, <clears throat> instead of converting with the others who either sat on the fence or were with God, rebelled against God. So rather than destroying all the souls, he created the new earth age. Now, man born of woman, man born of flesh. So he's saying, hey, I hated you because of what you did. But if you convert and you seek me in the truth, I will heal your land and I will heal your soul. God does not deny salvation to anyone, Kenite or anyone, if, like Brother Nathaniel and others, they come forward and confess that Jesus is the Christ, that he is the son of the living God. So how does this relate to economics? We're going down that path again. Gino Raimondo in Rhode Island is a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, the CFR, which is the Rockefeller Rothschild E. Mandel House government within this government today. It's the invisible government. That's what the Council on Foreign Relations was called by the late great FBI agent and student of the Constitution, Dan Smoot the invisible government that rules this nation, the council. It has ancillaries or different networks, such as the Committee for Economic Development, which controls domestic socialist programming here in the United States. It began the old urban renewal program in the 1960s, which was the forerunner to the modern HUD program, which has been a disaster. Socialization and the communization of our nation. So Gina Ramondo is a member in good standing of the CFR. And the CFR also is connected to the ACIR, the Advisory Commission on Intergovernmental Relations, also known as Metro 1313, which is a plan for regionalization of the nation at the state, county, and municipal level. Does that ring a bell? Hello? Saving money? Does it ring a bell to you? I'm looking that way now to my audience. Out there. How about you? Oh, it sounds familiar. It sounds like they're going to save us from financial waste and fraud. Yeah, it's going to take away the local control that you thought you had over your governmental functions. That's what it's going to do. And we see it. The Rhode Island Toll Road Project, Rhode Island Road Projects, the toll roads, the whole business of land management, land use. The roadworks program came from the federal government. I said this six months ago, and nobody chimed in. Nobody understood it. Taxing trucks, I call it a toll tax, yes. The gantries would be set up to set the stage for governmental checkpoints in the United States, starting with a pilot program in Rhode Island and a couple of other states, Delaware, for instance, and of course we have Joe Biden promoting it. It's all coming from the Department of Transportation in Washington and, believe it or not, Homeland Security, which sees this as an opportunity to bring about this control in each of the states eventually where you as a motorist will be paying a tax, but also will be abiding by the situations and the traffic situations and control grid for each particular state. Flow of traffic, passes, like they do in uh, occupied Palestine. The Israeli government has made it a checkpoint Charlie situation so that Palestinians and other Arabs have to go through these, these networks and these traffic lanes and these detours and these roads and all kinds of checkpoints 
in order to gain clearance. Friends, it's all about control, not about raising money to fix the roads and the bridges. That's what it's all about. So we see what Gina Raimondo has done with the uh, tourism issues and the whole business of the Commerce Corporation. You know, these are the programs that started out like the Ethics Commission, you know, Conflict of, of, uh, of uh, a Commission, the Conflict of Interest Commission in the 1970s and 80s, evolves, changes into ethics, and the more ethics we have, guess what? The more criminals we have, because they have no ethics. They have no morals, they have no values. Politicians are like cockroaches. It's not so much what they fall into and pick up, it's what they carry away and take back with them. Friends, <laughs> that's the analogy. I brought a little chuckle to your face. It's not funny, because Rhode Island is a microcosm of national, international, governmental control. We saw this in the 1970s with the five-year plan and Mr. Schmidt, Commissioner of Education, to develop a Lenin-style five-year plan for the Department of Education in budgeting, in statewide control, in the whole business of regionalization of school districts, and of course now, what do we have? We have Common Core, we have charter schools, all of it brought to us by the Department of Ed in Washington and La Cosa Nostra, you guessed it, the same culprits that want to run your charter schools for their benefit, meaning the teachers' pensions. <laughs> See, if people understood these issues, um, they'd be enraged, but they don't. You know why they don't understand? Because they don't understand the Word of God. If they did, they'd be educated. They'd understand what's going on today. We're at the end of the road, folks. Our state is finished. No matter what you think about the John Pagliarini's and all the great reformers like Mr. Ray Gallison Jr., he was a great reformer. Now what is he? Well, he's a cheap common crook, so to speak, right? That's what people will call him until some indictment does take place. That's not the point. The point is it's the system that is corrupt. It's not the people that cause the problem. They are part of the problem. And the system is in place to serve the elite, the globalists, the internationalists, the Zionists, the synagogue of Satan people who run the financial world. It's there before your very eyes. The names are on the screen and they haven't been changed to protect the guilty. Friends, it's all about control. And that's why if you don't have independence and you don't have your house in order and you don't clean up your financial records, it's already too late. A mortgage is a death grip. It's control over you and you don't own a thing if you're in debt. We are in debt bondage today. Bankruptcies at an all-time high the last five years. We now see record corporate bankruptcies, changes coming economically, politically. Most of all, we're seeing the robotization of industry, where robots will, in fact, replace human beings. We used to laugh about that years ago as the Buck Rogers 21st century. Well, it is the 21st century. And folks, it ain't make-believe. It's happening before your very eyes. Isn't that right? A hearty amen. Well, folks, get the message, get into the Word of God, understand the book of Genesis, where the serpent in the garden was the most subtle of all creatures. Hi, I'm from the government, and I'm here to help you. Does that sound familiar? Folks, it's almost to the end. Be prepared, because a Savior is coming when this whole worldwide situation is out of control. War, depression, economic collapse. And he is the false Jesus. We're out of time. We'll be back again in the subsequent program to give you more insight as to what's going to happen. Until then, Rick Adams, your producer for The Deadly Experiment. Goodbye, and Yahweh bless his life.